In the last video, we saw how sample size and margin of error are on, kind of on a teeter-totter with each other, and that the larger your error, the smaller your sample size, and vice versa. Now we want to see how your confidence level and your margin of error are related. What happens if you change your confidence level? So what I did here was I have it set up so that every single one of these has the same x and n. So I went ahead and calculated p hat. p hat, if you remember, is x over n. That's the formula we learned for it in section 8.2. So we have x is 40 and n is 100. And that means 0.4 is my p hat. So p hat's not changing for this whole problem. But what I am going to change is my confidence level. So I'm going to go to the calculator. I'm going to make the calculator do all this. So I go to stat, tests. And you want to find one prop Z interval, not test, but interval. It's letter, oops, letter A, there it is. So one prop Z int. N was 40, or excuse me, X was 40, N was 100. My first confidence level is 0.80. So I'm going to type 0 0.80. Calculate, enter. And there it finds the interval for me. And now we just do it again and again and again. So you go back to stat. Go to tests, alpha A, leave it 40 and 100, but change it to 0.90, calculate, and we get that interval, and then do it again. Alpha A, and make it 0.99, and we get that interval. So I'm going to go type those intervals up one second. There they are in there. Now, I want to find the margin of error. So the margin of error, remember, is half the width. Okay, so now we need to find that margin of error. So we're going to have to do the half width thing. So we want to take the high number, the upper number, and we want to subtract the lower number and divide it by 2. Okay, so let's see if I'm right here. I think it's 0 0.06278. Now remember with proportional ones like this, everything's going to work out to be really small. And that's because, um, well, it's proportions, right? The biggest it could ever be is 1, and that's never going to happen. So let me type it. So if I did it this way, I'd say 0 0.46278 minus 0 0.33722. Close parentheses, divided by 2. Enter. And I get 0 0.06278. And now I just have to do it again and again. So 0 0.48058 minus 0.31942 divided by 2. And then just for fun, I'll do the other way. 1 half times 0 0.52619 minus 0 0.27381. Right? It doesn't really matter which way you do it because it's still division by 2 of that subtraction. This is as long as you have parentheses around that subtraction part. That's the important part. All right, there we have it. So now I've got to type those answers in. So now that gives us margin of errors of 6.3%, roughly, 6.0627, 8%, and 12.6%. Hmm. So what's happening? Well, as we increased our confidence level, our margin of error got larger as well. And this makes sense because if you want to be more certain you caught the actual p-value, you go get more people, right? Go get a larger interval. Make a larger interval, and you will have more confidence that you caught it, right? All right, so let me type that up. Okay, so here's what we see happening. As we increase our confidence level, we are also increasing our error, our size of our interval. 
Now, this makes logical sense, right? If you want to be more sure that you're capturing what the true population parameter is, population parameter could either be mu or p, it doesn't matter, then use a bigger interval, fish with a bigger net, right? Right? You'll be more certain you caught it if you're out there with a bigger net, i.e. your interval. You're trying to capture what those values are with your interval. Now, why is this happening? Well, it's happening because if you look at the formulas here, and I, we're using the one for proportions right here, um, up here. And actually, I just threw in real quickly for you. This is the one prop z int is the interval we were using here. So oops, if you're using it for the interval for proportions, it's the same as it would have been for means. I just didn't want to make you do it twice. But look what this, what's happening. When you change your confidence level, what you're doing is affecting your z-score. Now let me go back for a minute. Here we go, a couple pages ago. You can see here that the confidence level was 98%, and then we had to go find the alpha, find the alpha over 2, find the z-scores, right? All of these are tied together. When you change your confidence level, you're fundamentally affecting what your z-score is. If you raise your confidence level, you're making your z-score bigger, right? And that's what we're doing here. So confidence level affects the critical values, either z and or t, depending on which one you're looking at. I guess I can just get rid of the this and just put a comma, right, z or t, by making them larger. And since those values are in the numerator, right, they're not in the denominator, that's for sure, they're over one technically, they're in the numerator, that causes your whole interval to become larger as well. And this means that your confidence level and your margin of error are directly related to each other. When one goes up, the other goes up, they go hand in hand. Right? So confidence level, margin of error, are directly related. And I gave you little symbols here. So when one goes down in red, the other goes down in red. When one goes up in blue, the other goes up in blue. They go hand in hand, as do, does the interval itself, right? So that's why I have error and size and width, because remember, the size and the width is all directly relational as well, right? Because all it is is the error is half the width, or the width is half, twice the error, whichever way you want to think about it. I just threw that in there too, right? The width is twice the error, right? That's back a couple pages. So if error is half the width, the width is twice the error, and that means that they're kind of working together, right? And so now we also know they're working together with your confidence level. Whatever your confidence level is, if you raise it, it's going to cause it to be a larger and larger and larger interval. Right? Because when you raise this, you're affecting your critical value. Your critical value is in the numerator, and that's going to cause the whole interval to get bigger. In other words, if you want to be more certain you know where the parameter is, you make a bigger interval, you'll catch that, that parameter. And it just occurred to me I should probably throw in a logic bit for the other one, so let me just I put it in here. This is the other one. So we saw two things. We saw that error and confidence level go together. They're directly relation. And just a reminder, in sample size and error are inversely relationed. That's because sample size is in the denominator of these two formulas. So if you go poll more people, if you take more samples, you're able to be more accurate. You're able to be more precise with your interval. It can be smaller. It can be um, has less error to it. Right? You can kind of zoom in like you would on a camera because you've got a larger sample. You have more ideas of what's going on. You have a clue as to what's happening, and you can be more precise with your interval. All right, we are done with that section. So I hope you've drawn all those lovely pictures and graphs for yourselves with um, little diagrams and arrows. They will be very helpful to you on your exams. And I'll see you back here for more videos.